Are Russian conscripts finally getting sick of this war? And are they starting to realize the truth about what they are doing in Ukraine? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran, and we are going to be taking a look at the latest leaked audio from insight from Ukraine and Russia. You know he's out there always doing the translations for us, giving us the insights into uh, a lot of these, uh, what I think are intercepted phone calls by probably Ukrainian intelligence services. As you guys can see, he has his membership program. Uh, I, of course, am a member uh, because we got to support each other. Uh, and as you guys know, YouTube's been pretty hostile to Ukraine content creators. That's why I actually launched my own site, uh, combatvetnews.com. Link is in the description. It's got all my YouTube videos. We're going to start adding uh, news articles, but crucially, the members only area has the uncensored combat footage breakdowns uh, that YouTube won't let me show you. Anyway, if you want to support me and keep me doing what I do, definitely check it out. Moods of some Russian soldiers have changed drastically after one year of war. Just listen to this intercepted phone call to find out what they think of their government now after they saw the truth themselves. Let's go. Yeah, so this is actually a really common occurrence in a lot of institutions. Often the institutions, so human beings are always going to try to assert the influence that they can around their environment. And so what a lot of institutions will do is they will take people that don't have real power and they will give them a... Uh, avenue in which they feel they can exert power that isn't actually violent or coercive or damaging to the system. A good example is prisons, right? In prisons, um, prisoners can file grievances using a prison uh, sort of communication system. Um, they can say that, oh, I was supposed to get my medication with lunch, but uh, it, it never came, right? And I don't think that's fair. And sometimes they can win, sometimes uh, not. But it's but the process feels like a a way to assert your authority to say no, you can't treat me this way. This isn't ethical or right. But here's the thing: those forms go to prison officials. They go to the wardens of the prison. So you don't actually have an independent authority who adjudicating these cases. Um, this is sort of like a teacher and a student getting into a fight, and then you go to the principal's office, right? The school is going to side with itself like 100% of the time, uh, or, or not usually 100% of the time, right? Once, If people believe that, if they believe these systems don't uh, ever return to, you know, if they don't ever produce positive results for the people who don't have power in the system, then the, then they won't. The systems just won't be used. So they have to provide intermittent conditioning. Sometimes you have to get a break, and this is what these Russian soldiers are describing here. They are saying, "Hey, I technically have a contract, so you can't keep me here." And then they say, "Well, if you're so wrong, then uh, take us to court." And knowing full well that they don't have a lawyer and they control the paperwork and personnel that flow in and out of the war zone. So you'll never get near a court. Uh, this is how these systems are. This isn't an accident. This isn't, hey, uh, illegal. This is a function of how systems are designed to make sure that the soldiers don't realize, well, we'll see in a minute. Force protection. It's a military term that means keeping your systems safe. It covers body armor and weapons that protect soldiers, but it also covers things like passwords and encryption that protect digital information networks. That's because the military understands that protecting digital networks with soldiers' information can be just as important as protecting the soldiers themselves. And when it comes to your own force protection, keeping your digital footprint secure is essential. That's why I wanted to talk about today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. 
Grab the big deal now because Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.83 a month with three extra months and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get the many benefits of Atlas for this ridiculously low price. You can get this deal by clicking the link in the description below, but hurry because it's a limited time offer. Atlas VPN acts as a digital tunnel, preventing bad actors from hitting you with spam ads, malicious links, trackers, and it notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Atlas VPN can give you access to content not available in your country, like your favorite shows on Netflix or Hulu. It can also let you compare price deals where airlines or hotels will often offer different prices for different locations. A VPN can also keep your Google searches private, and Atlas VPN protects unlimited devices. So get the big deal now because Atlas VPN is just $1.83 a month with three months extra and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get the many benefits of Atlas VPN for this ridiculously low price. You can get this deal by clicking the link in the description below. But hurry, because it's a limited time offer. <laughs> Right. This sort of mass protest. Uh, one one soldier laying down their weapons and saying, no, I'm not going on patrol uh, is, is annoying. Uh, but when you have dozens or hundreds of soldiers laying down their weapons and refusing to fight, an army has a massive problem. This actually happened in the First World War in both the French and Russian militaries. Uh, soldiers simply said, you know what? We are not going to fight any longer. Uh, this is preposterous. We're fighting for literally nothing, uh, for inches of mud. Um, and in some, and for the commands of those militaries, it was a crisis because it threatened to spread across the boat of the militaries. See, they believe still that this is. Uh, not a function of their system, right? This is a, they're operating as though this is an aberration, that there's this crooked teacher, or crooked warden, or crooked whatever, commander, and that if only they could get to the 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 the, the people who really care, the, the real, once I tell the people that aren't corrupted, then they're going to make sure, they're going to step up and, and put this right. And this just isn't true. This isn't how these systems work. This is not an aberration of the system. It's functioning as designed. происходит right like an fsb agent is going to side with a conscript and imprison his own it's not how these that's not how organizations work guys This is what's crazy, right? Putin's on TV talking about anti-terrorism. Uh, this is, of course, probably a response to the uh attack of some kind um by some uh, purportedly by a partisan group i still maintain that it was a sort of false i don't want to say a false flag that's conspiratorial but but that it was a, a manufactured event by the russian state the organization that claimed to be the pro russian or pro ukraine russian group their gear was all weird i don't know how else to put it Right, and they talk about they want to save peaceful people. And when he talks about, I want to speak out, but I'm scared, um, this is in response, of course, to a recently passed law by the Russian state Duma that fines tens of thousands of dollars and up to six years in prison uh, if you, quote, discredit participants in the special military action. Uh, so 
it's a, a real reflection of th the current state and the fact that these laws are being passed is indicative that there's a lot of people speaking out. What's funny, I think it's interesting that they talk about the Af Soviet Afghan war, which was from the uh, 79 to 89, when the more salient conflict is probably like Chechnya, which was by all accounts uh, as bad as this one. <laughs> This is actually uh, spot on. Um, yeah, NATO is indeed sending its uh, some of its uh, advanced weapon systems. Not all of them. N nothing. Nothing that's so advanced that that it would that you can't afford to have Russia see it. But uh, late stage weapon systems, often ones that were developed in like the 2000s for state on state conflict and have never been used in actual combat. Um, a lot of those are getting tested now. Um, you know, high Mars, uh, these uh, artillery shells with anti-tank mines in them. Um, and yeah, it is. It's exactly what it is. It's been turned into a testing ground. And leaders, yeah, always turn these things into a a uh, uh, a dick measuring contest. And I wonder if I can say that. Um, but the point is, is that it's an ego check, an ego test for a lot of these leaders. But it's essential to their survival, right? Uh, if if a leader is seen as looking weak, uh, they're not likely to win election, or they're likely to be in the in the case of Putin, overthrown by his inner circle, right? Who who are bloodthirsty and are waiting to smell weakness. So. Losing is not an option in these conflicts, and that's how you end up with what we're seeing now. It's a classic trope, actually. In Africa, in the, uh, I believe it was the Angolan Civil War, you had... Uh, a U.S. backed faction where the U.S. started intervening and they said, hey, listen, we just want to cause trouble for the Soviets. We don't think this faction's going to win. They're uh, aligned with a, 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 an ethnic or linguistic minority in the country. Um, they aren't that well trained. They're not that well equipped. The Soviets are backing a much larger, much more robust uh, ethnic, tribal, and ideological group. Um, but we want to just, we don't want to just roll over and have no dog in the fight. So they said, let's just give some some surplus World War II era weapons to these guys. We'll train them how to use them, and they can be a thorn in the side of the Soviets, maybe for a long time. Well, that went on for a couple of years, and then at some point, this uh, losing faction started to fall apart, just like everyone predicted it would. But then, when actually faced with the idea that the U.S.-backed force was going to lose, suddenly the leaders in the U.S. and the CIA had a meltdown, and they decided that they could never, in a million years, allow this to happen. So they frantically, and in a total panic, threw tons of weapons, came up with half-baked schemes, and did pulled out all the stops in an effort to thwart this, uh, this takeover by a sort of loosely Soviet-backed government. And it was just, again, a classic example of even democracies are prone to these ego contests where you can say, for example, that, oh, well, we're just, we're, we're, we're just, you know, intervening to help. We just want to raise the costs for our enemy. But then when it actually comes down to dipping out and losing, it's hard for these ego-driven leaders to do. <laughs> What scares me is how many conflicts uh, you turn on the TV and you get told this, like this line. 
we're the good guys. We want peace. We protect people. I'm not stupid. U.S. man, the U.S. in the in Iraq invasion, bros. I mean, you should look at some of the coverage from that era. It was, it was weird. It was looking back, saying. pretty un, an uncomfortable level of like jingoism. We blah blah blah. Бережем пытаемся людей. Все это полнейший. Прям вообще. Это не пыль в глаза. Это кирпичи прям. I've never heard this saying. If you guys can translate it, man, let me know in the comments. Like, like what what this turn of phrase means in Russian. Yeah, this is one of the other tragedies, man. Is that you know it's funny in you think about like Vietnam, and you think about in the united states like a lot of the veterans of those wars uh, in world war ii korea vietnam a lot of them seem to have turned out and come back and been very patriotic like very very pro uh their country um and it's funny because iraq and afghanistan veterans they have this weird perspective a lot of them really really dislike the government like really dislike the government. They uh, they love America, like the people and the land, um, but they have some real resentment of the government and the way it's run and the people in charge because they correctly have identified that I think the vast majority, like Russia, the vast majority of the people who run the country now um, have never and will never serve put their life on the line for it, right? And I don't mean in, in, in like a literal like firefight sense, but it'd be nice if they did. It literally even just being willing to put on a uniform and say, hey, if if needed, I will go and defend this country by, by, by force of arms. And the fact that you have a lot of these worms in, in Congress and in and, and high levels, the executive, um, who just don't have that, whose loyal, their only loyalty is to money and their political party, um, I understand where that sense of, of, of bitterness comes from. Because you look at Congress and you go, they don't look anything like us. And that's what the Russians probably experience as well. They look at the oligarchs, they look at Prigozhin, they look at Putin, and they say, these guys don't bear any resemblance. Their lives look nothing like the life of uh, the average Russian. They've never set foot in the military. They've never done anything resembling public service. Um, Putin, perhaps you would consider his service in the KGB, but he, you know, th that was for the Soviet state, it wasn't for Russia. Um, so I understand where a lot of this anger comes from. And I don't think it's, I think it's going to be especially bad among Russian veterans of this war, but I don't think it will, it's unique uh, to Russia or Russian veterans. Okay, guys, okay. I mean, that's like saying we'll put the Taliban in the White House ourselves. Like, uh, okay. You notice here, I don't know if you saw my YouTube, uh, my talk about getting canceled on Patreon, uh, which is why I started um, my own site, combat, combatvetnews.com. Um, yeah, you notice how much, how many of these words uh, he's censoring. Idiots? Like, the algorithm, but this is the thing. The YouTube algorithm has become a lot less amenable to Ukraine content. Uh, the, the powers that be, for one reason or another, have decided that uh, Ukraine is can't. Ukraine is over. Uh, we got to focus on something else, right? The next, the next big thing um, needs to come up to get people in a panic, and 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 that's all fine if you're the media. But 
the problem is Ukrainians are still out there fighting for their lives. So, you know, we're going to continue to cover it. I know Insight will, um, but you see how preposterous it's becoming to be a smaller creator in this space, how much you have to self-censor to get your message out there in any form. Я думал, что, ну, реально там не хватает сил объявили мобилизацию, думаю, ну, по народу, значит, есть чем биться, есть какие-то стратегии. Нет, так же... Okay, quantity is a quality all its own, guys. <laughs> a lot of people is sort of a strategy. ...посадки бросили, Просто, то есть, ну, получается, новое мясо привезли для обстрела. Чтоб целей было oh, больше yeah. для артиллерии, все. Вот которые все есть вот, э, вокруг меня, я знаю, мобилизованных. По пальцам одной руки можно пересчитать, кто где воевых. Okay, I wonder what this means. Does he mean that there's a small number that are actual combat veterans who have actually served? Because I know that was a thing that uh, uh, Russia claimed. Their government said, oh, we're only mobilizing people with combat service. Um, or if he means that they are being kept in the rear areas, or literally they mean they're cowards and they're not fighting back. They're not engaging targets. <laughs> Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, man. I, you know, it's funny because the, these calls have been leaked for a while and, and I'm just so skeptical. Again, it's like they don't understand their own personal level of powerlessness before this, this, this system. They call it the war machine for a reason. Дай бог просто, если он свой пост досидит президентский. Это вот просто будет самое лучшее для него, если его в офис не пришьют. Ну, я думаю, что он готовит к пути уже к отступлению. Hopefully this soldier is not alone and that now the majority of Russian army understand how pointless this war is. Yeah, I mean, it's funny talking about Putin going away. You know, it's almost like a trope at this point is that almost always uh, somebody says that, hey, your political enemies, their political head is very ill. Uh, people said it about Trump. They say it about Biden. They say it about Putin. They'll say it about Xi Jinping. Literally anytime he goes missing for more than two days. So I think... The notion that it's it's funny how that's such a such a common occurrence for people to say, oh, my my enemy's leader is 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 weak and frail. I think it's some sort of like archetypal thing, like some sort of like Jungian king that's like, oh, he's a frail, wounded king. It's because that their whole society is corrupt and he's like a wounded symbol of it. I don't know. People are weird. Anyway, that's all I had. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, we're still getting the stuff together for Combat Vet News, but we'll have the lieutenant tier. Um, thank you up probably next week. And But thank you to all of our lieutenant, colonel, and regular tier members. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.